Hey guys, what's up and what's good? As the locals say, Roland Era product line has like a whole set of new firmware updates. And specifically, uh, in this case, since you know I'm a fan of the Roland TR8 drum machine, uh, we're going to be looking at what's new with the TR8 update. There's a lot of new features, um, and let me show you what's new. So first of all, um, the hardest new features, in my opinion, are the following. You have manage your kit and pattern library uh, with easy backup and restore over USB. That's kind of important because, um, as you know, um, if you look at the uh, TR8, there's only a few kits that you can store. Um, it only goes so far. If you have like a whole library that you want to build and manage, um, all of that intuitive stuff that comes out of that machine, um, it needs to be stored via USB on the computer. That's a great feature. Finally, we got this added both A and B parts uh, without stopping the sequencer. That's very, very important. We can now work on A and B parts at the same time. Um, it's not treated separately anymore. Uh, you can lock the content of a pattern you know, experiment on it without changing it. That's great. You know, sometimes I have a pattern that's really great. And then from there on, I want to go different places. And uh, sometimes it works out well. Sometimes it sounds, you know, doesn't sound great at the end. So uh, if you have something, you want to keep it, you want to protect it. That's the way to do it now. And finally, uh, the fourth hottest feature in my book, this is just me thinking, uh, the scatter function for one cycle. Remember when you hit the scatter function and it sounds great, whatever, uh, sounds good once, twice, all right. The third and the fourth time, oh my God. And sometimes it's kind of hard to get out of it because people forget how to do that. So now uh, by default, it's going to be one cycle, you know, uh, one bar or two bars, depending on how you set or, you know, whatever your uh, rhythm setting is. And there's a whole new list of MIDI features, which I find really, really interesting. Uh, and those MIDI features are useful. Uh, when Roland released the TR8, uh, the MIDI, impl MIDI implementation was so-so. It was more of a standalone box to be treated, and I found it way more, uh, way more stable to just sample the audio and deal with it in audio at 96 kilohertz. I have no limitations of storage, really, on my computer. I'm very happy, you know, using it all up but um, it only goes so far. So uh, now the MIDI velocity is variable by the accent setting. So you can actually, um, you know, control the MIDI velocity, local on and off, and MIDI controller modes determine how MIDI data is sent and received. Uh, you can select kits using MIDI control uh, change messages, uh, scatter on off, type and depth can be controlled via MIDI control change, record patterns in real time from external MIDI devices. That can be pretty cool in case, you know, um, you like the feel of, let's say, machine or an Akai controller or something like that, or Ableton Push. Um, you're not limited to hammering them out on those clickety pads. I like the Roland pads and buttons, but they are very 70s retro. But for playing live, no, they're sort of like digital on and off. Uh, and they click a lot, believe me. Uh, but I like that. But if I really want to, you know, record uh, something with a human feel, I need something else. So that's a great feature. Uh, you can disable sending of all sending of all MIDI messages. I don't know what's going on with my English today. I, sh I shouldn't have done the local thing in the beginning. Um, and then toggle whether um, or not the TR8 responds to a play stop messages. Um, what else? There's another set of features, which I think is other cool features. Customize kids by adjusting the gain of each instrument to suit your individual style. Uh, I'd like to play around with that. I haven't done that yet. Uh, roles are now easier to engage, offer more control and sound better overall. Uh, alternate unlatched trigger mode engages only while the on button is held down. So alternate unlatched trigger mode engage. Whatever that means, man. And then get back. And here's another one that I find really interesting is get back in the groove by instantly starting a pattern from the top, right? So how do you get this update? Um, that's the question. So this is kind of simple. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now that we have the functions out of the way, uh, you go to um, Roland, to the website, and click on update. It leads you to the downloads pages, downloads page, updates and drivers. Click on download system update version 1.1. You have to agree to a 
to an end user license agreement. It's all good. And then I agree to it and then it gets downloaded um, as a file on the computer. That is actually a very small download. It's pretty instant and it does come with an installation file. So it has a PDF file and a .bin file in there, which is the firmware update. Uh, that's going to get transmitted via USB to the TR8. Um, so it's not a media drive or anything that we're updating. We're actually updating the functions of the actual device. And if you look at that PDF, it's a pretty small PDF. It gives you all the instructions. I'm not going to go into that right now because you have to follow it uh, step by step. Anyways, just going to blow that up for you so you can look at it. And then you can press the pause button and follow that um, in case you can't find uh, the instructions or you didn't download them or anything like that. Cool. So that said, we've, we're, what we're seeing here is that Roland does update the product line. It updated the entire product line. Uh, a lot of those features, uh, I believe, were implemented because there was a survey that went out um, and people said um, something that I want. Um, one feature that is missing in my book, two features are missing in my book. Uh, one is copy the, copy the pattern from A to B or from B to A. You've done something in A that you really like and you want to do a, a variation of it. You don't want to have to recreate it. You want to copy it to B and then make some small or whatever modifications. I think that should be that should be a given. And then uh, changing the 96 kilohertz uh, sampling rate of the audio interface. I know it operates at 96 kilohertz on the inside. I find that beautiful. But if you're um, streaming 14 tracks uh, back to your DAW at 96 kilohertz and all the time, ideally you don't want to be locked into one sample rate, being able to work in 44.1, 48 kilohertz as well on top of the 96 kilohertz uh, would be great because sometimes you have a project that is already locked at a certain rate. So a um, little bit, uh, two omissions here. Good to see that Roland is updating their stuff. Uh, can't wait for more updates. Um, would also like to see how the plug out synthesizer fares with updates and uh, firmware stuff. Um, I think that's gonna be critical, what people got themselves into. Uh, that's a different story. For now, that was just a quick uh, review and quick informational video um, on the software 1.1 update for the Roland TR8. Thanks a lot for watching and please like it and subscribe it and hit me with questions. And if you want to see something, uh, want me to bring up certain subjects, machine, Ableton Push, Roland, it's all here. I'll be more than happy to do that for you. Take care. Bye.